Pisces. Hello Pisces, this is your December forecast for 2013. And this month for you is going to be a little bit career oriented. Believe it or not though, I mean here we got Christmas and everything else going on for you. But the sun and the new moon is in this area of career. So I see you kind of shooting your arrow up here towards some goal that you might have been working on, preparing for, as we went through here uh, uh, November. Um, that's the ninth house, preparation for the career. And plus you still have uh, Saturn here in this area too of the ninth house. So it's like whatever it is you're working for, the foundation, the basis of where you're aiming to head over the coming years. So it's no just short term uh, career thing, it's a long term career thing. Um, Mercury has been retrograde also in this ninth house for an extended period. So it's allowed you to, to really tweak and go back and fix and fill in and take out. So getting all your ducks in a row. And now Mercury is going to be also moving into this area of the 10th house and career as well. And that's going to allow you to, to really get up and running with something here. And you'll see very quickly results coming in already here this month. Now, even though you're Pisces, this month you're going to feel a little bit like a Sagittarius. And I just mention this because every month, every time we, the sun moves through a new sign, well, we all get to feel a little bit how it feels to be that sign because this is where the sun is filtering through. And, and hence, we get to see through that little facet of our inner diamond. And so we incorporate and embed more of that Sagittarian energy which is always very optimistic. It's very happy-go-lucky. I love that Sagittarian energy when we see it and recognize it in others and in ourselves because we become extra optimistic too, right? So the new moon here, Pisces, in this area, it's time to write your new moon check here on December 2nd, um, your, your abundance check that you write to yourself and uh, also plant the, the seeds for the entire coming year between now and December of 2014 uh, to, to make certain promises to yourself in this area. How do you want this whole new year to look like as far as the work that you do? Okay, I think you already have a pretty good visual of it just because Mercury has been thinking and planning uh, and researching here lately so take that concept, take that idea, Saturn's been tweaking it for you, and place it into your intention. Really even write it out on a big check what you want to do, uh, you know, by the end of 2014. That's a good one. See, already on the fourth here, Mercury's moving into the career house and joining in here. And here on the third now, there is a communication with a male person. This is going to be here between your ninth house and seventh house. So I'm feeling that somebody that you work with, uh, perhaps a one-on-one -on -one partner, anybody you have uh, creative projects with perhaps, uh, or of course also it could be your significant other, um, uh, love relationship, but whatever you're going to be talking about I feel is going to tie in more than just the romantic side itself which it could be because it is coming from that seventh house area, but, but it's, it's going towards that ninth house, Scorpio up there, and all these things that you have been um, working for and mentally tweaking. And I have to say mentally tweaking, <laughs> why? Because not only is Mercury here in, in uh, Scorpio, but it's been working so deeply, but the mental energy the mind energy is definitely here because see this very Mars is in the sign touring through Virgo. So Mars is taking on the, the flavor of how it feels like to be a Virgo. You know, even Mars, which is its own energy, will take on the flavors of the total scope as it moves around. And Virgo represents um, uh, the, the, the organizational skills. You know, they're the perfectionists. Uh, they will uh, not only think and refine their thoughts, but, but they can have a tendency to even overthink. But you see right now, 
in this talk between Mercury and Mars, well, I think it ties in with exactly what you've been doing and what you've been researching. So, but this person could be a very good help and assistance to you. That's on the third. On the sixth, even though you've had your talk, I wouldn't sign anything just because Mercury also is square. Neptune, Neptune is our hopes and dreams and visions, which is good when Neptune is uninflicted. Um, then it pertains to our hopes and dreams and spirit. And, but when it's square, well, you know, it, it could be deceptive too. Or maybe you're just not trusting it. Maybe it just sounds too good to be true that you're a little skeptical. So just hold back a little bit until at least you get more insight, more information, which is coming behind it very shortly thereafter. On the 10th, Mercury is going to get either a direct communication, and this is positive, this is concrete, um, it's a, or it's also a flash, instantaneous, just knowing you get that full download. So after the 10th, I think you should be good. And I think you being skeptic, which you normally never are, Pisces, because you take everything face value, but I think the skeptic feeling is coming that you've been burnt in this very area before. It's like, yeah, yeah, I've heard that. It never happened. But so, but, but here I think you're, you're definitely going to be getting some great news and insight. And it has to do with money, by the way, because Mercury and Uranus, Uranus is in your second house for income. So I think once you know that this is more uh, something that you can count on, rely on, well, then, of course, then you can work with it totally differently. And I think you're going to be quite excited because right behind this here, Pisces, Jupiter is going to trine Saturn. Now, Saturn is that ninth house. This is where you've been putting down all these foundations for getting yourself up and out there into the world. It's the ninth house. So your, your energy has been launching something out there. And 11th house, groups of people, networking too, put the two of them together. So, and they're both very powerful, both Saturn and Pluto. So when, when Jupiter comes in here, well, even though she's retrograde, she went retrograde November 7th, she's still generous. She's still that mother of abundance here. And uh, so I don't believe that whatever is coming in, you know, the good news here with Jupiter and Saturn, may not pertain to new things, but it's something that you have worked for ever since late spring and throughout summer where Jupiter has been growing and growing and expanding and where you've been pushing outwards with that vision. Well, you can get opportunities coming from it now because you planted those seeds earlier and now in retrograde, well, it's coming back. Remember the coming back, re-entering? Well, it's coming back as a result. This is why retrogrades can be really good too, right? Now, we just want to be very careful here, uh, girls, especially. It goes for you guys too, though. Uh, any enhancement that you want done after the 21st of December, you know, take it off your calendar until uh, Venus, uh, once again, will go direct because she's retrograding on the 21st. So anything, even the days leading up to it, I'd be careful and take it off my calendar. Um, like I've said to, to the others here, i got to warn you all, though, because I think we've all seen pictures and photographs of, you know, lips gone wrong and, uh, <laughs> and the likes. So, I mean, if you need to go get your hair cut or bleached or whatever, colored, uh, if you're going to have any kind of other enhancements or Botox, facelift, just wait to, to late winter to have that done, okay? Um, and just leave that alone for now. Uh, the sun, though, is moving in uh, to your 11th house of social networks and uh, just catching up with friends and having fun here. Um, so you're out of the work mode. It's like all the way up to the 21st. You're going to be hammering down, getting things all ready, ducks in a row, and then you're just going to let go. And you're going to take off for a little bit, Pisces. Why? Just because what's coming up here the rest of the month, well, you're, you're, you're going to enjoy family. Um, we have a very good setup here, by the way, uh, between the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune. So it's going to be one of those good, nice, old-fashioned Christmas, you know, with the great atmosphere and so forth. 
Um, but Mars and uh, Uranus is going to be opposed one another on Christmas Eve. So there's a something, there's a charge of energy, something maybe not really coming together, or there could be a delay of sorts. Uh, for you, this is going to be uh, between uh, the 8th house and the 2nd house. So I can't really see how that's really going to be affecting your, your financial situation on a day like this. Well, there has already been, you know, the shopping going on. But, but Mars is like, it wants to get ahead. It wants to come out. And then Uranus is going to be a little, little tug of war. But you will see what it is and what it means for you. Maybe just delays if you're out and about traveling, airports and whatnot. If you're out traveling here and it is slippery, you know, just be careful so we don't get any accident-prone situations. Then the end of the month here, December, well, it's going to be hectic. It's going to be a little challenging. We got the Sun and Mercury, Mars and Uranus and Pluto all like, mm -hmm. So we want to lay low so people don't say things they're going to regret. You know, Mercury can just, you know, have a little loose lips there. Uh, especially because Mars and Pluto are going to be somewhat square and so in this there, there, there might be a sense of sensitivity and defense and you said, she said, he said, whatever. So I would just say take it easy and, and just open your heart here because these energies that are coming in, they're also going to start off the year of 2014. So we'll talk more about this uh, as we open up for the January forecast because it's going to color a little bit, you know, how the year is going to turn out. And then, of course, there's other aspects in there that I'm not seeing here now in December. So that can kind of like balance it as we move into next month. But these last few days from the 28th to 31st, uh, just a little caution is needed, both um, physically, that's the sun, uh, and then, of course, Mercury, how we speak and what we take in and what we put out there. So, and then, okay, action and drive and temperance. Let's just be temperate here, end of the year. So this is pretty much what we have here for uh, December here. Pisces, I think it's really exciting, especially what it is you're, you're doing and putting out there. Venus is so on your side. You're going to love to uh, socialize this month because you're catching up with friends, which it looks like for a long time you haven't been able to, but it's going to linger in this area of... Uh, your friendships here for several, several weeks because the retrograde is going to take it back in there. So you're going to have ample time to just enjoy and I see you really wanting to both catch up with them and then make a note of that you want more of this coming up for 2014. So hey, listen, go and listen to your moon sign, rising sign Pisces. As always, I love this time of the month when I can do your charts. So I will see you next month. Bye now.